Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about NAC, or N-acetylcysteine. Last week's video generated a lot of questions about how glutathione will work, and what is the mechanisms, and what are some of the supplements you can take to improve glutathione levels. So let's go into it. So the main purpose of taking NAC, or N-acetylcysteine, is to improve glutathione levels. Glutathione is a tripeptide, so it's made up of three amino acids, glycine, L-glutamic acid, and L-cysteine, right? So NAC, or N-acetylcysteine, will convert to L-cysteine and help convert into glutathione. So one of the most important things is that you have to understand is it's one of the most potent antioxidants that our body can produce, right? So it reduces the effects of what we call reactive oxygen species, right? So reactive oxygen species, ROS. What that means is that our body is under constant stress, right? Oxidative stress. So what happens with reactive oxygen species, right? It's produced in the mitochondria, right? And if it's produced, it starts to damage some of the structures as well as the pathways, right? In order to produce energy. And that damage will cause inflammation, and inflammation in turn will produce more reactive oxygen species. So this kind of a vicious cycle that can occur when we have oxygen, uh, reactive oxygen species. So glutathione is a very important uh, antioxidant to help recycle some of the glutathione as well as improving or reducing the oxidative effects, okay? So what we know, Oral administration of glutathione, GSH, right? It does not adequately restore glutathione, right? If you take orally glutathione, it doesn't restore glutathione to an adequate level. It rapidly breaks down uh, in our body by the liver and the intestines, right? So the glutathione is broken down before it can be ever utilized if you take it orally. It does not cross the cell membrane. So glutathione needs to be kind of taken apart, go into the cell, and, and rebuilt. So it, it will not cross uh, as a whole structure. And also, in some studies, glutathione, the half-life of it is only about 90 minutes. So it's short-lived. So the question is, how do we improve that, right? And you also have to know that glutathione will decrease as we age. So the older you get, the glutathione stores will go down. Uh, creating more reactive oxygen species, more inflammation, and basically aging, right? So let's go ahead and look at some of the um, supplements that we can take. But before we even do supplements, what kind of foods can we eat, right, to help improve glutathione levels? So you want to increase sulfur-containing foods, right? Onion, garlic, broccoli, kale. Now, I know whey protein can also improve uh, glutathione levels in certain wheats. However, uh, for most patients that we treat in our office, they have some sort of autoimmune condition. So whey protein or milk protein and, and wheat is really a no-no in our office. So uh, if you want to go after sulfur-containing foods, I would suggest going with these, okay? It's very important to uh, improve sulfur-containing uh, foods. The other one is exercise. Exercise in itself will improve glutathione levels, right? And thirdly is coffee enemas. Now coffee enemas are known to help with cancer treatments, right? The Gerson therapy and so forth. However, does it improve glutathione levels? Now that's questionable, right? There are some studies they say that, you know, taking oral caffeine as well as coffee enemas really don't improve glutathione levels. However, coffee does have a lot of antioxidants, so there are some benefits of drinking coffee. However, in terms of actually improving glutathione levels, it's questionable, right? So uh, you can give it a try, but uh, there are other ways that you can improve glutathione levels at this point, right? One of the supplements that you can take is S-acetyl-L-glutathione, right? Basically what they did was they attached an acetyl group to the glutathione and then it helps to protect the glutathione as it passes through the gut uh, or the stomach um, 
and it also helps improve cell um, membrane uh, transmission or, or transport. So an acetyl group attached to the glutathione will help uh, preserve the glutathione and get it to the cells that need it. Another way is to do liposomal glutathione. And the way they do that is they bind glutathione to phospholipids. So if you add it to a phospholipid, it can kind of protect the glutathione so it can get absorbed in the gut as well as through the cell membrane, right? So it has that effect. So you can do S-acetyl glutathione and a liposomal glutathione, okay? Now, there are other precursors that you can take to help enhance what we call recycling of the glutathione. Because glutathione is produced in our body, but if you have some raw materials that help build glutathione or recycle glutathione, it can be quite beneficial and uh, quite powerful in terms of health benefits. So some of the precursors are what we call regenerators, right? Re recycling uh, glutathione is selenium, okay? And then alpha lipoic acid and NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, cordyceps extracts, go to cola extracts, milk thistle extracts, and L-glutamine. So if you took this on, let's say, an empty stomach, and you followed it with, let's say, an omega-3 or an EPA, DHA fish oil, you can enhance the absorption of glutathione into our system, having a more profound effect. Now, there are many companies that make, you know, uh, combination packets of this, right? I'll list some of the supplements that we use in our office below in the description. So you want to go ahead and read through that. But there are a um, couple of different delivery methods that we use. One is the um, oral glutathione, where we do S-acetyl-L-glutathione and liposomal glutathione. But we will also use uh, a combination of these to enhance the recycling uh, properties. So you can take two different uh, types of glutathione uh, support. A third way that um, we can also improve glutathione is uh, through transdermal um, transmission. So if you took a cream that has glutathione in it and some cofactors and you apply it to the specific area that you want to treat. So let's say we have someone who's got Hashimoto's thyroiditis or inflammation of the thyroid. You can take a glutathione cream and apply it to the neck and that will help reduce the inflammatory process as well as um, reduce uh, maybe TPO and TG antibodies in our body. So it's very important to do uh, combination therapies for some patients or some people will be on a maintenance dose and all they need is some recycling nutrients like this. right? But in our patient population where they come in pretty sick, we may load them up on glutathione in three different ways to help improve that. So. It's very important to understand the mechanisms and understand how we can take it to improve glutathione levels in our body. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.